Hello, tribers. And we are back with yet another interesting live session just for you. Let me see. And we are live. So all those who are tuning in right now, please let me know if you can hear me properly, if you can see me properly. This session is going to be very interesting. And the topic for this session is also very, very interesting. So stay tuned. Give me a hi in the comments. If you're watching us, hit the like button. Let us know if this is a topic of your interest. Firstly, please let me know if you can hear me properly so that I can begin with the session. Welcome to yet another interesting session, Tribers. And today's session is about managing blood pressure and sugar during pregnancy. For this session, we have Dr. Sonia Mandappa with us today. Dr. Sonia is a gynecologist associated with the Motherhood Hospital in Mysore. She is an OBG specialist with an expertise in high-risk pregnancies, all pregnancy-related problems, including health care of the mother and child before and after childbirth is taken care of by Dr. Sonia. Dr. Sonia is mostly visited by expecting mothers who want to receive pregnancy care for delivery and post-delivery. Other reasons include her efficiency in handling high-risk cases and her performance in many complicated obstetric and gynecological surgeries. She is an expert in preconception counseling and care during pregnancy, delivery, and post-delivery. She also has an experience in areas of obstetrics and laparoscopic gynecology surgery. She has an advanced certificate in colposcopy, training in basic ultrasound and modern gynecological endoscopy. Welcome to the session, ma'am. Could you please Thank share you some so thoughts for the session? Thank you, uh, Shweta, uh, for setting such a wonderful platform. I always uh, believe in uh, sharing knowledge. Every individual definitely go through a tremendous changes physically, mentally, and every stage in womanhood, the spectrum, right from uh, the time she's born till the menopause, the wide spectrum of physiological and anatomical changes is definitely influenced by various factors. And you from your end and your uh, platform which is created for today is definitely going to make a lot of difference for we doctors so that when you come sensitized with the problems what you are facing, it's easy for us to deal with those problems, try to make you understand the facts and figures and help you out in the journey of motherhood. With this, I understand today's topic is pregnancy and hypertension, maybe preparing for pregnancy without hypertension. Yeah. yeah. Right? This is what I understand. See, now pregnancy is a blessing. Pregnancy is also adventurous. It's a dynamic process. And pregnancy, there is a lot of physiological changes in every organ of our body. When we are speaking about hypertension today, I would like to make a mention of the physiological changes which happens in the cardiovascular system. That means the circulatory system and the cardiac system. Again, which means so everything which is related to blood, blood vessels and the blood which is pumped out of the circulation from the heart. So the heart pumping and the vessels related to it and the same blood which is flowing out of the heart, reaching to the uterus and supplying to the fetus. So the entire system is changed in a pregnant lady, unlike the pregnancy uh, completed at, to start with pregnancy till the end of pregnancy and also three months post delivery. 
So the changes, if we understand in our body, we can actually prepare for pregnancy, prevent complications during pregnancy, also have a wonderful uh, period post-delivery. With this, I would definitely want to take some questions from your end. Meanwhile, I think we'll open with all the physiological changes which is related to your questions. Right. So you've answered my first question in part already. But the question yes. was, why does uh, blood pressure and blood sugar increase during pregnancy? See, why is definitely because of the physiological changes which happens. That means, I would like to tell you that if there is a non-pregnant lady and there is a pregnant lady, when we compare the blood volume, the pregnant lady's blood volume is increased by 50%. So there is dilution of blood. That means the uh, RBCs are also now decreased because the volume is increased. So when the RBCs is decreased, that means hemoglobin is also decreased. When the blood volume itself is increasing, that means there is a lot of load reaching to the heart. So the heart tries to pump in more. So there is more cardiac output. So there is more cardiac output. The pulse is also increased. So that's called a stachycardia. So it's a chain linked process. Now, when there is a fetus inside the uterus and it is increasing in size and one particular time when it is reaching at the level of umbilicus or the navel, which approximately is around six months, five and a half to six months, that is around 22 to 24. It starts giving a mechanical compression to the low vessels, which is actually pumping blood into the right atrium or into the heart. So when there is pressure also, the cardiac output is more. So the physiological changes in pregnancy is adaptive. They slowly get adapted. But if there is a variation in this adaptability, then probably it becomes pathological where a physician will not wait for any mishap to happen. And it is not physiological. It's time for us to intervene. That is when we call it pathological then. Right. So the changes right. is because of the changes in the system itself, the cardiac and the vascular system. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, so, and what is the reason why we need to control our blood pressure and sugar? Why do we need to keep it in check and under normal values during pregnancy? Yes, Shweta. See, what is happening is the pressure increased in the mother end, that is the maternal end. So, there will be issues faced by the mother. We also have to recognize there is a fetus which is developing inside and there will be complications to the fetus as well. So the complications to the mother and the fetus will be addressed in three different levels. The entire pregnancy of nine months is divided into three trimesters. One, two, and three is the first trimester. Four, five, and six is the second trimester. Seven, eight, and nine is the third trimester. The changes and the level of uh, pressures are different in all three trimesters. Now, supposingly, your question to me is, why is it important or what happens to the mother and the fetus if it is not managed well? The mother, definitely because of high pressures, will have problem by herself and also there will be a problem to the fetus. So she may develop Usually what happens, not all pregnant ladies will develop hypertension. Those ladies are already having issues before pregnancy. They will have definitely problems which are not addressed preconceptional before pregnancy. What I mean to say is, if the patient is an elderly patient, she's more than 40 years when she's conceived, or she's already a patient of hypertension on medication, she is already a patient of high cholesterol levels on medication. If she is already having other comorbid factors, like she is diagnosed diabetic, 
diagnosed thyroid, she is on medication for the same. Or she may have any autoimmune disorders which she is recognized and she is on medication. She is on blood thinners. Then this particular bunch of patients, when they want to conceive, they probably do a good homework, plan for pregnancy, or else this definitely will have influence when she conceives. Now, when she conceives, as I told, that there is a problem with the vessel, the blood which is circulating in the vessel, which is pumping out of the heart, reaching the uterus. So usually blood vessels, what happens is, there may be clots inside the blood vessels. So because of the clots, the vessel also may constrict. So the blood circulating to various parts of the body, example liver, example lungs, example brain, all other organs also, the blood flow is decreased. Because of the high pressure, there may be constriction of the vessels. There may be blood clots. So this will affect most of the parts of the body, liver, brain, and then also there may be a compromise of the blood flow from the uterus to the fetus at the placental bed. So now the baby is also affected. How? Because of the decreased blood flow, the size of the baby may not increase. It may be a growth restricted fetus. We call it as IUGR inside the uterus, intrauterine growth restriction, or maybe because of high pressure at the placental bed, the placenta may be detached. So it starts bleeding. So she land up in early labor or maybe a preterm labor. So the baby also, the growth is affected because the blood circulation is not optimal. So the, there is a problem both for the mother as well as the fetus. Right. Okay. So uh, what are some of the warning signs that women should look out for to understand that during pregnancy, their blood sugar or uh, blood pressure has increased? See, we are very fortunate that our Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology Association has given us guidelines and protocols once the patient is tested pregnancy positive. Now, a lady is tested positive she comes to our clinic, the first thing we do is we assess the patient physically and also we try to document it. Now, the first important thing when they come is they may have checked the urine pregnancy positive. Then complete detailed history is very important. 30 to 40% of the diagnosis is made by history only. Whether she was on any medications earlier, what is a family history, whether her mother, father, anybody is diabetic, hypertensive, whether genetically there is any issues in the family. Then when we assess her height and weight, we record her body mass index. If it is high, then she is a potential patient to develop hypertension tomorrow. If she is already a, a patient on blood thinners, we have to see to that when we do an ultrasound, we check whether the flow of the blood from mother to fetus in terms of we call it as Doppler. Doppler is the study of the blood vessels, whether there is a resistance which is showing there. Once in case we recognize that uh, there are high risk factors for her, then serial ultrasounds are very important. We have particular guidelines. We do scan at eight weeks, though the Dopplers are not very clear. We ask them to follow it up at 11 to 12 weeks. If the Dopplers are again high, then we follow it serially that by five and a half months. Again, if I tell in terms of weeks, 22 weeks, 28 weeks, 32 weeks. So the follow up is very, very important for them. The guidelines will definitely help us to see to that there is no problem to the mother and the fetus because of the high pressure. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, how can a lady prepare for a healthy pregnancy? For example, uh, there is a family history of uh, diabetes and hypertension. Right. So if somebody wants to plan a pregnancy and we uh, rest assured that or maybe take precautions of not developing hypertension and high blood sugar during pregnancy, what are the steps that 
one can take? See, first and foremost, Shweta, I would uh, definitely recognize the patient by the age and professionally what kind of work hmm. and what kind of lifestyle she is leading. This matters for today's generation much. Right. First and foremost, if the patient is an elderly patient, married late and planning for conception, we want them to conceive at the earliest. A pre-conceptional clinics are in most parts of the country, in every city. I want them to walk into that clinic, assess themselves. Maybe we assess them physically and also give them some blood tests to do to assess their system. Now, suppose a body mass index is high. We want her to cut down on her weight. We want to do her some physical activity. We will definitely ask them to go for some diet counseling. And in case if she is um, okay for the blood investigations, do the profiles beforehand. The profile is inclusive of a complete blood count. Check whether they're anemic or the normal state. If you are related on the topic today only for hypertension, yes, we do the other blood tests like liver function test. How is the liver functioning? Then we have to do her renal function test. How is the kidney filtration? Then we can assess her by uh, doing a heart scan. How is the heart pumping? How is the cardiac activity? Is the skeletal structure of hers acceptable for a pregnancy? Is there already pressures in certain organs that we need to nullify those pressures? Is she okay with her thyroid status? Because everything is complementing when it comes to a pregnancy. And it's all teamwork. The liver, the heart, and lungs, and brain, and kidney. It's kind of how you do a teamwork. It's kind of that teamwork which will help the pregnancy to continue further. So the, all the organs need to be evaluated with the functioning of the organs. So an ultrasound, that is scan is a must with the blood test. If everything is normal, there is only problem with the weight. Let's give her some uh, targets, how much she has to reduce, both exercise and diet. If everything is normal, she needs some medication. Let her complete that medication and then plan for pregnancy. If everything is normal, she says, I'm worried because my dad is hypertensive. My mother is diabetic. Of course, we will look into that. If her blood parameters, there is derange, this derange, uh, derange blood parameters will be attended medically with a prescription. If everything is normal, we feel that it is high time if the age is more or less irrespective three months before she plans to conceive a folic acid medication is a must because many of them think only after 40 folic acid is a need but the need of the art today is every lady who is intending to become pregnant should take folic acid three months before she plans to conceive keep her hemoglobins good keep her blood pressures fine and her uh, sugar status and the thyroid status in the normal range. Then proceed to conceive. Okay. 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 What are some of the lifestyle changes that uh, we can undertake before planning a healthy pregnancy? This is a very, very important question. If you wind off the session early also, I'm happy. But then this is the need of the hour for all youngsters. Because I've been talking to my patients and always I tell them, Ahar Vihar, Achar Vichar. This is important. Ahar is, you know, the food habits. Yeah. If it is related to the today's topic, we should advise them to take low salt diet. Not too much on the junk food. Not too much on salt and peanuts. Not too much on uh, uh, the chips, fried items. Because high sugars, high salt is definitely not healthy. So low salt diet is very important. Specifically if it is mineral salt or black salt. See what you need is only half teaspoon of salt per day. 
sodium is needed for the body, but excess sodium is not. Then I feel that sleep is very, very important. Minimum of six, usually they say six to seven hours of good sleep. But at least good in the sense you are in deep sleep. That means you're not actually, you know, touring in your thought process when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. It is deep sleep where your body is charged. See, when, when I want to use my cell phone, irrespective of it is, uh, which, which model it is, it has to be charged if I want to use all the apps. All the apps, if not the apps, incoming, outgoing call or a missed call, it's only when it is charged and it is switched on. For that, we need to charge the phone. Similarly, our human body needs to be charged and renewed and rejuvenated. So that is when we need to sleep and give our tissues a little rest so that there is good oxygenation. So three to four hours of good sleep is very, very important. And high protein, when I add, uh, when they already know they are hypertensive or family history, I feel not too much of proteins is like kidney beans what we get. All those uh, high protein diet has to be curtailed. You should have a healthy food. That is ahar. Actually, uh, when we are take, speaking about ahar, uh, everybody knows and they are on the system and they know about diet. They sometimes speak about intermittent fasting. They speak about keto diet. But I believe that you have good food, but then you should also exercise. If you are having low salt, everything what is told by diet, but there is no physical activity, there is an imbalance again. That is when uh, we develop a lot of other disease because of this imbalance. So whatever you are consuming, that also has to be uh, physically, the, some activity, you have to burn some calories with that. And you have to maintain that. So what we feel is today, everybody is workaholic. Everybody is working hard. There is a difference between hard worker and working hard. There's a lot of difference when you are not liking the work, but struggling to work. That is when you're physically affecting yourself, mentally yeah. also yeah. affecting yourself. So that balance is very important. So what we feel is you should work, but work with pride, work with luxury, Work with good frame of mind and love the work, whatever field you are. But you start loving your work, then that is not stressful. That is very important. And walking in natural air, at least 10 to 15 minutes is very, very important. Right. So, Ahar, Vihar. Then, uh, Achar. Achar is, you, you know how you have to be disciplined. Professional life and personal life. That also has to be balanced. That has to be very disciplined way. Then we advise and promote some kind of a feet walking. Some kind of a sun bath. At least 15 days once. These are very important. And uh, if anybody has dizziness, if they have headache, and if they have um, sometimes uh, uh, blurring vision, this is not a good sign. They have to reach out to the doctor. But when she is already pregnant, even if she has completed her uh, uh, antenatal uh, tests and antenatal uh, uh, outpatient uh, consultation, if in case in between the consultation, if she develops headache, if she develops uh, blurring vision, if she develops epigastric pain, she has too much of vomiting, and if she has feet swelling, or sometimes anybody seeing, they say the total body swelling, definitely reach out to your consultant. It may be normal also, but it may be abnormal also, which we need not miss. But the consultant will definitely evaluate whether it is because of hypertension that she's having a lot of issues and attend to it. But a lot of times the patients keep quiet, even if they have body swelling and feet swelling, assuming things where the process is already started off. And they develop fits called eclampsia when it is too high blood pressure. Okay. 
so uh, now that we've discussed what people can do to avoid getting a high, uh, high blood pressure and high sugar say now somebody has developed a high blood pressure and high sugar during pregnancy so what are so uh, what are some things that they can do to keep it under control and get it back to normal during pregnancy shweta see as i mentioned we have three trimesters so we divide that as a patient who's already had hypertension becomes pregnant is one one set of patient yeah. a patient who gets pregnant and is okay till 3 months and after 3 months before 5 months she develops bp that is when we call it as pregnancy induced hypertension right so that is the difference now if she gets pregnant till 3 months she is fine after 3 months she goes to the consultation chamber one reading they say your blood pressure is high we will ask them to wait for a while and then re record then when we re record we record when the patient is in lying down position and the sitting position and if there is a difference we call it as mean arterial pressure if it is high we ask the patient to check for her whether she is losing proteins in urine we ask them for a urine check if the urine check is positive then we declare her as pregnancy induced hypertension if she is in pregnancy induced hypertension we dictate the warning signs if she is again called back and her lifestyle modification is done and she has not got any symptoms we will conservatively keep monitoring her we will not give her any prescription for uh, medications okay if in case if in case there is changes in the blood test changes by ultrasound and then we record her blood pressure high that is when i feel that she needs some assistance through medications for the pressures to go low but if she is recorded high bp but she says madam i got severe headache sometimes i have got blurring vision i got too much of gastric gastric gastritis too much of feet swelling mm. that is when we feel that we need to control it there and then otherwise she will come back to me with fits that is convulsion which is mm. called eclampsia okay in case if she develops very late then we also have to assess whether this is already affected the fetus so our prime motto will be to handle the mother so that she has no issues with eclampsia also with the bleeding tendencies because three organs are very important brain the liver and the kidney all three will be uh, monitored scan wise and blood test wise okay great no very i'm sure all of us have got a lot of clarity on these topics now so let's just dive into our viewers questions we do have a few of them our first question says can we take a tablet for blood pressure in pregnancy yes now uh, we have to assess the need of the bp tablet is it only because of stress and lifestyle we definitely say no if there is a problem with the vessel or the problem with the cardiac output then we'll definitely pitch in and start prescribing for that there are medications which are recommended for hypertension during pregnancy but that has to be diagnosed diagnosis is important one reading of high blood pressure no so that has to be uh, supported by lot of other evidences maybe we will call the patient again we'll look for the signs we'll look for the symptoms we'll look for the ultrasound findings we'll look for the blood blood test findings and the urine test as well and in combo i feel this particular patient requires a medication to decrease the pressure then we will medicate the patient okay the next question is what to eat for increasing hemoglobin oh that's nice anemia by itself is uh, i think next time uh, shweta we'll definitely speak about anemia 
Yes. Uh, but then uh, we first of all, if it is anemia, then we'll have to differentiate whether it is mild, moderate, or severe anemia. If it is severe anemia, we have to give them medication plus injectable if needed blood. If it is moderate, we can check whether only injections are better. If it is mild variant, then we can actually support them only with medications. Now, again, coming back to medications, we have variety of uh, uh, pharmacological uh, um, uh, contents available in the market. So we need to assess why there is anemia. Is it because she's not eating well or she is eating well, but there is absorption issues or she is eating well, but losing blood either while she's passing stools because of piles or fissure or because of her menstrual cycles, which is very, very heavy. Why is she losing blood? That is what we need to you know, diagnose first. If the diagnosis is made, if there is an issue with the intake, improve the intake with diet. Diet, as you know, palak, vegetables, green leafy vegetables is very important. Dates, you know, dry fruits, these are all increased. I tell my patients, eat one carrot every day, have beetroot juice. That is important. So it will increase. If so many of them are not okay with tolerating the iron pill, but we have now various formulations and various type of medications available where it is uh, definitely uh, adjusting to their body system. Right. But okay. we need to diagnose why anemia before Correct. writing. You see, why, uh, why I mean to say is what happens is in a case of thalassemia, example, it's a genetic condition where their hemoglobin is always less than 10. How much ever iron you give, how much ever medication, they will not increase more than 10, most of them. So we need to diagnose. So for those patients, if we keep on giving iron, continuously we are loading them with iron, there is a condition called iron overload, which is causing more damage. So my dear friends, I always tell that it is better to diagnose anemia but the cause of anemia, only when you know the cause, it is treatable. N number of times, it's only deworming which helps. They wouldn't have been dewormed for long, uh, you know, long, maybe years together. One deworming tablet, definitely there is an improvement in anemia. Right. Okay. Yeah. The next question is, my BP is average 90 by 60 now at 18 weeks. Though I'm physically fine, is it okay? Anything I can do, doctor? Okay. So she's already 18 weeks. Usually what we do is in case if they've already got a reading before pregnancy, anytime, maybe coincidentally, sometimes they go to the clinic before pregnancy and they register themselves and they know that their already baseline BP is so much, then we need not worry. But then during pregnancy, as the pregnancy progresses, we usually expect it to increase but now she's 18 weeks 18 weeks there is no much load of the fetus by weight on the vessels which is pumping uh, to the heart as the pregnancy progresses after 28 weeks we will see some kind of a pressure mechanical pressure happening to the veins that definitely may increase then even though if it is low but she's physically fine there is no symptom of giddiness no symptom of tiredness, then we accepted that her baseline is so much. But still, we want your volume to be good. So I advise you to take a lot of water, minimum of two and a half to three liters per day, we usually advise. But drink a lot of water with a little bit of salt and uh, sugar and then maybe some fruit juices. Volume should increase. That is what is important because there is always a dilution during pregnancy. But otherwise, posture is important. Later on, uh, when she is increasing in pregnancy, maybe if it increases, fine. Otherwise, she has to take good uh, diet as well as hydrate her well, hydrate herself very well. Okay. The next question is why there is so much gastric during pregnancy? 
See, one is because of the hormonal influence. Usually what happens, once the pregnancy test is positive, there is one hormone called HCG, which is released. There are a few hormones which play during pregnancy that will go and relax. The hormone will relax the stomach sphincters. Now, if you have uh, understood in your fifth and sixth standard syllabus, you have a stomach, which is C-shaped. C then there is one sphincter, upper sphincter and a lower sphincter. Many a time because of these hormone influences, what happens? There is a relaxation of the sphincter. So there is a reflux. So the reflux of the gastric contents, that's when they have this kind of gastritis more. But as the pregnancy advances, because of the mechanical pressure, the stomach emptying is very late. It is not complete. It may be partial or it may be very slow. That is when they develop gastritis. Mm -hmm. But all said and done, Shweta, a lot of times my patients come and tell me that I had too much of gastritis and that's why I think my baby born had too much of hair. <laughs> yes. This is a common myth, you know. Yes. Uh, but then I have not done a study on that. Sometimes <laughs> I feel all this myth should be related and should, we should do a study on that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, but this is a common, uh, you know, grandma story when they come to us, they say so. But... Uh, 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 anatomically and physiologically, there is a explanation for that. Okay. I'm sure it will be a very interesting study and an interesting Mish conclusion Mish if Mish somebody uh, yeah. invested time in it. So the next question is, I had gestational diabetes. I was on a very strict diet. What are the chances that I have diabetes post birth or am I prone to have diabetes later in life? Yes, first question is, where you are polycystic ovary patient before pregnancy? Does anybody in the family, mother, father is a diabetic? The next question is, you were diagnosed gestational diabetic. Were you on a diet control that particular time or they had switched over to insulin that particular time? The third thing is, post-delivery, if in case after delivery, after 24 hours, were you still diabetic? or uh, uh, your sugar levels were normal. If this is the case, then the spacing of pregnancies, we usually ask for two to three years. Now this two to three years is a good gap to modify your lifestyle, to modify your weight. And uh, preconceptionally, I think uh, uh, she has to take, uh, she has to do a good homework on her menstrual pattern. She should not allow herself to do, become polycystic in case if she is so. And diet uh, has a major role to play here. But genetically, they are prone to become diabetics again. But recognition of diabetes early pregnancy, we have super guidelines from the organization today. And we are picking up uh, young uh, girls with diabetes during pregnancy. And the first, first dating uh, uh, checkup when they come to is when we screen them for diabetes. If that particular day when she is dated uh, pregnancy at eight weeks and we do a test and we recognize them, uh, they are diabetic, the diet control starts then. We give them a diet chart according to the gestational age, according to the weight and the calories required for them. And meanwhile, the pregnancy takes off Maybe Fagen, if it is not controlled by the diet, the only medication we give them is insulin. Okay. So there are chances. There are no chances also. Yeah. It all depends yeah. to on the, all these factors which I've told now. Okay. Okay. The next question, the next is, question is, what are the post-birth effect of gestational hypertension and gestational diabetes? Okay. That's, that's a... Huge list. Okay. Uh, uh, come again, Shweta. You asked me about post-diabetes and post-hypertension. Uh, what are the post-birth effects of gestational diabetes and hypertension? Oh, I, uh, so this question is for birth defects for the baby post-delivery. Not for the baby, but if I have a diabetes during pregnancy or hypertension during pregnancy, what are the what are the effects that will carry forward on my body after I give birth? Because the birth defects is always related to the baby. So okay, birth let, effects. Okay, so 
in case if the patient is a hypertensive patient on medication and then she delivers the first 48 hours see during the process of delivery also we are worried about her bleeding again 12 hours post delivery we monitor her bleeding because any time she can start oozing because everything is dependent on the clotting factors or the blood clotting factors the again monitoring continues to 24 hours then 48 hours then three weeks the first one week and again three weeks why are we worried is as the pregnancy nine months is a slow process immediately after delivery it will not come back to the same status three months post delivery is the time where we ask you for maternity leave that is when the postpartum period is because the changes again reverses back the uterus starts involuting and this particular time if the patient has developed bp because of pregnancy after 48 hours we don't see it again and diabetes because of pregnancy then we should see her sugar levels as normal if it continues then we have to continue her medication as well but this particular time investigation is very important all the system should again uh, you know try to adapt to the new change without the fetus now mm -hmm. so we look into their uh, hemoglobin status look into their uh, sugar status and also look into their blood clotting mechanism the factors if everything is fine then we monitor her after a month, we again redo it. If she is a diabetic, we ask her to come back again after four weeks, again after one uh, six months. Till then, it is very, very important to manage because she may develop headache anytime. That means there may be a blood clot which is just, you know, tripping into the brain. There may be a hemorrhage or there may be a blood clot which is going into the uh, vessels into the organs that means if the kidney filtration is hampered that means the blood circulation there is a constriction of blood vessels in the kidney that is the filtration part if it is in the liver or if it is in the heart any organ can be affected so we need to monitor that in a fashionable way that means the protocol says immediately after birth again 48 hours again one month again after six months till six months she needs to be monitored okay wow thank you so much for all the elaborate explanation and all the interesting analogies i'm sure all of us who have watched this video today have taken away so much of information and so much of understanding about what causes uh, diabetes and hypertension in pregnancy as well as what we can do to manage that in a very nice and effective way doctor are there any pointers according to you that we've missed out in this session which you would like to fill us up on it's 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 a simple funda that is if there is what is blood pressure the blood what is flowing inside the vessel is going in a uniform manner there is rbvc wbc platelets so it's going in a queue in a uniform manner. The minute it starts pressurizing the walls of the vessel, there is a pressure. If the wall is weak, the compound itself is weak, then you have a problem. Or the contents what is flowing is causing pressure onto the walls, then there is hypertension. So we need to maintain the integrity of the vessel. The same vessel is continued and the same blood flow is continued to various parts of the body. So when the pregnancy is there, the heart is pumping more blood. So it is reached out to all organs. So this particular blood reaching the head, reaching the brain should not have clots. Otherwise, there will be blood clot in the brain. We call it a cerebral hemorrhage. If the BP is high, and the blood flow is going to the liver and disturbing the liver also, then we call it as HELP syndrome. So there is hemolysis 
there is platelet which is elevated, liver enzymes are all deranged. So we are interfering with the liver. The same blood which is going to the kidney, the pump, uh, the filtration is interfered. So the less urine comes out. So these are the organs which is affected. So if one particular medication or lifestyle modification is helping the vessel musculature, the contents of the vessel, all the organs are spared. Then the same blood which is going into the fetus, the fetus also will be spared. Otherwise, the fetus will have low birth weight. There will be intrauterine growth restriction. The baby is not getting enough of uh, oxygen. So there may be hypoxia. So we are forced to do an emergency delivery, either normally or by C-section, because there is no blood flow going into the fetus. And how will the fetus survive? So maybe before time, we need to deliver the baby. So delivering baby before time has its own complications. That is preterm birth. So we want to avoid all this. As long as there is no pressure, all the organs are spared, including the fetus. But for that to be, apart from medication, lifestyle modification is very, very, very important. Everybody is a working lady today. Everybody is an employed lady today. Everybody has got targets to achieve today. You have no excuse for that. Let's accept the fact. So acceptance is the vichar what we tell today. Accepting your work pressure. But how do you dilute it? Find a method to dilute it so that it's not affecting the organs of your body. The skeletal structure is fine, but inside is all the soft organs which is taking the load of your work. So kind of dilute that and have the faith in the reality today. That is very important. And you have to develop awareness. When you know that parents are diabetic, hypertensive, change your lifestyle for today because you want to invite a new fetus inside for which your house to be ready. So that is very important. Be cheerful at work. You have joy in your work. That is very, very important. Follow yogas. We say that Shavasana is the best method of yoga. You know, you just have to lie down. But we say twice, at least 10 to 15 minutes of Shavasana, at least three times a day is very, very important because the blood circulation in Shavasana is against gravity. When you're like, why do you sleep? Because there is no blood pumping against gravity. You are lying down in a status position. And that position, blood circulation is uniform throughout your body. So that is when we say that relax yourself. That is more than important. When you relax, your blood vessels will be also toning up to what you want. Great. Thank you so much for this explanation and for shedding light on so many important topics that we need to understand. So thank you for yes. taking out your precious time and being with us here today and share all this knowledge with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shweta. But this is a very, very vast subject. And the time frame is, uh, see, it's very difficult for us to explain. Yes. Because you really need to understand the subject if you want to know how to rectify that or you want to avoid such situations or any mishaps. So any clarification or any doubts, they can actually write to us. I, probably uh, you can forward me the questions anytime. Who is uh, not live and they want some queries to be answered, you can definitely send us the questions. We'll send the answers back anytime, anything. We believe in knowledge sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much once again for being here. And to all the viewers who tuned in, thank you so much for watching this session with us. Please let us know in the comments how you liked it. If you have any queries while watching the replay of this video, let us know. We will certainly send all your questions to doctor. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thanks for the platform created. Thank you.